Since the introduction of NSAIDs in the 70s, a variety of cardiovascular abnormalities has been noted by clinicians and researchers, including hypertension, worsening of pre-existing congestive heart failure, and alteration of kidney function. An article that caught the world's attention was published a couple of years ago in Denmark. One of the common media headliners was NSAIDs doubles the risk of heart attacks. The Danish study looked at 29,000 people who had experienced cardiac arrest outside the hospital, and then at whether these people have taken NSAIDs. They found that the risk increased by 50% by taking diclofenac and 30% for ibuprofen. However, the study was observational and not causational, meaning this doesn't definitively say that NSAIDs causes heart attacks. Also, a cardiac arrest is when the heart suddenly stops beating and pumping blood around the body, which can be looked at as an electrical problem. This is not the same as a heart attack, which is more like a plumbing problem. Although a heart attack can lead to cardiac arrest. Also, the underlying physiological reasons for this link weren't discussed in this study. And of course, the study had its limitations like every other study. And for not to scare you off, the risk is a relative percentage. So if your risk of getting cardiac arrest was 1% before, then taking ibuprofen could increase this risk to 1.3%. I think this was an important quote from the study by the lead author, Professor Gunnar Gislason. The findings are a stark reminder that NSAIDs are not harmless and should be used with caution and for a valid indication. The study was published in a peer-reviewed European Heart Journal on an open access basis, so it's free to read online. The link is in the description, together with links of other studies I base my information on, if you want to give it a closer look. Of course, like all medicine, NSAIDs have side effects, and some groups are more vulnerable to these side effects. Also, the side effects are usually not observed when one occasionally uses NSAIDs. But what if one regularly uses NSAIDs during exercise? I think this is an important question, since we know vigorous exercise increases the stress on the heart and can cause overtraining, which can negatively affect the remodeling of the heart and can also cause dehydration that can affect the blood flow. Could that might increase the likelihood of cardiovascular side effects of these drugs in the healthy population without any pre-symptoms of cardiac problems? To understand how NSAIDs affect our system, let's take a look at what NSAIDs are and how they work. NSAID stands for Non-Steroidal Anti-Inflammatory Drugs. NSAIDs are among the most used drugs in the world to treat a variety of conditions including pain, arthritis, and musculoskeletal disorders. It's a drug most people know of and often use, but do you really know how they work? Immune cells and many other cell types will form their cell membrane into arachidonic acid, which is converted into prostaglandins, that has the ability to increase inflammation, fever, pain, and renal perfusion. Which type of prostaglandins is determined by the enzymes COX-1 and COX-2, cyclooxygenase 1 and cyclooxygenase 2? Despite being the same name and working on inflammation, fever and pain, they are still very different. COX-1 also serves a role in preserving gut integrity by mucus production in the stomach and platelet activation in the blood this meaning activating blood clotting. COX-2 does the opposite by increasing platelet inhibition, making the blood thinner. NSAIDs work by blocking these enzymes, so inhibiting the signaling of inflammation, pain, and fever. NSAIDs can target both enzymes or be COX-1 or COX-2 specific. So the COXIP 
is specific to COX-2. Ibuprofen, naproxen, and diclofenac are not COX-1 or 2 specific. Since these have the potential to increase blood clotting by inhibiting COX-2, the side effects include cardiovascular problems, and individuals with hypertension or cardiovascular diseases should be cautious of using these types of insets. Actually, the Food and Drug Administration in the US updated their label warning in 2015, since taking these drugs has been found to increase the risk of getting a stroke or cardiac arrest, with and without a heart disease or risk factors of heart diseases. However, research are not conclusive to determine that the risk of any particular NSAID is higher than others. This list used to include the COX-2 specific Rofecoxib. This was removed from the shelves in 2004 because the drug had a massive impact on cardiac health showing significantly higher risk of myocardium infarctions, what we also call heart attacks. In contrast, aspirin are mainly targeting COX-1, so it's actually promoting thinning of the blood by inhibiting platelet activation. This is why individuals with hypertension and cardiovascular diseases often can be advised to take aspirin if they want to lower their blood pressure. However, aspirin also inhibits mucus production, and that is why aspirin is known to have a side effect of gastrointestinal bleeding or ulcers by damaging the stomach lining. Because of these differences, I will not be talking about aspirin when I mention NSAIDs during this video. Due to being a sports physical therapist, I'm interested in research and exercise in sports. It seems like many elderly patients with cardiovascular problems are aware of these side effects or are often screened by their doctors. However, many athletes, amateurs in particular, might not be screened or have regular visits at their doctors. In many countries, NSAIDs are an over-the-counter drug and it's not banned or seen as doping in sports. Athletes have easy access to this drug and in my experience, many athletes are regular users, or are even heavily dependent on them. Also, many athletes may not be aware of the possible side effects of NSAIDs. It is safe to say that NSAIDs doing vigorous exercise carries the potential to harm the function of the kidney and the gut. There is even an example of this from a marathon in Brighton, England, where a 23-year-old male suddenly collapsed and died, 16 miles within the race. The cause of death was hypothermia, dehydration from the exercise, and high intake of ibuprofen, resulting in bowel ischemia and gastrointestinal bleeding, which altogether caused his heart to stop. Could NSAIDs have specific negative cardiovascular effects in athletes? And could they ultimately cause a sudden cardiac arrest during exercise? Let's take a look at the incidence and the main causes of sudden cardiac arrest or death in athletes. SCD is the leading cause of death in athletes during exercise and usually results from cardiac conditions that are triggered by the physiological demands of vigorous exercise. Actually, most athletes are asymptomatic prior to SCD. A review conducted by Harman et al. in 2015 found an incidence of SCD in 1 to 50,000 athlete years in young athletes and up to the age of 35 years. This is 4 to 5 times higher than previously estimated. Initial studies had previously reported hypertrophic cardiomyopathy to be the most common cause of SCD, a genetic disorder where the myocardium becomes thickened. Hypertrophic cardiomyopathy must not be confused with concentric hypertrophy from adaptations from exercise. Hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is not really an adaptation, but more a degeneration where the heart becomes stiffer and lose its contractility due to an abnormal and dysfunctional arrangement 
of the muscle fibers. Interestingly, more recent comprehensive investigations in the United States have found the most common cause of death to be unexplained in athletes that died from SCD, and that they had a structurally normal heart. So, we know that many died from a cardiac event, but in most cases, not what caused the cardiac event, and how it happened in the normal structured heart. Now, let's look at NSAIDs and cardiac arrest in athletes. Athletes with an underlying cardiac disease of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy could potentially worsen their condition by taking NSAIDs and put themselves in danger of a heart attack or cardiac arrest. This is due to NSAIDs inhibiting effects on the COX-2 enzyme, which we know this could increase blood pressure as a result of platelet aggregation and dehydration. However, NSAID use before exercise or during exercise and its effects on the cardiovascular health appears to pose an unexplored area of research. Could high intake of NSAIDs cause athletes to experience a sudden atrial or ventricular fibrillation resulting in cardiac arrest? We don't know. Like I stated before, studies about NSAIDs in athletes without prior cardiovascular events or risk factors are so far missing. We do know that endurance athletes have a significantly higher risk of atrial fibrillation than the general population. A recent meta-analysis found NSAIDs to be associated with a significantly higher risk of atrial fibrillation. A physiological explanation for this has been proposed as a sodium-calcium exchange enhancement of the heart cells. The NSAID, silicoxib, a COX-2-specific inhibitor, has been shown to enhance sodium-calcium exchange activity in the pulmonary vein, resulting in increased triggered activity, making the atrial tissue susceptible to arrhythmias. There is a lot to take into consideration when working with athletes. There is definitely evidence that NSAIDs have the potential to be harmful for the cardiovascular homeostasis. I was not surprised to find out that many athletes are using these drugs regularly. NSAIDs have the highest intake of all medication in elite and non-elite athletes. A study investigated the use of NSAIDs in professional soccer, both males and females, during the FIFA World Cups the biggest sporting event in the world, happening between 2002 and 2014. Around 50% of all players used NSAIDs during the tournament, and one-third used it before every game. Of course, the importance of the games and the money at stake could influence the intake of NSAIDs to keep the players in the game. So let's take a look at amateur athletes. Another big study from Germany, including over a thousand amateur soccer players, revealed that over 50% take NSAIDs multiple times during the season, and 1 out of 10 takes it before every match or training session. Their reason for taking the NSAIDs was mainly to alleviate pain from the previous injuries, or to increase the performance, because they felt NSAIDs made them perform better on the field. They felt that they increased their physiological capacity, kept a clear head, and in general felt more safe when taking them. However, over two-thirds did not know about possible side effects and the increased risk of heart problems. These findings seem similar to studies investigating collegiate athletes in the United States. The study got a lot of attention in the media in Germany, and they even released a documentary about this issue. Here is a small clip from the video. A regular match day in German football. My towel, my football boots, and my tablet. Silvio Cancian, a player for SV Wright, has no pain. But without painkillers, the team captain doesn't go on the pitch. Without painkillers in football, I can't even remember that. This is a film about football. About the kick of the pills. The higher you play, the more medications you have. Ibuprofen is handed out like Smarties. 
If you don't take your pain tablets now, then then you don't play. About how players harm themselves with medication. Yeah, I don't know about you, but I found this to be very disturbing. I've attached a link in the description if you want to see the rest of the documentary or read the study. Okay, so it seems like athletes like to take NSAIDs because they feel like they perform better. But is this really the truth? Does NSAIDs really increase the performance? A meta-analysis just released in 2020 included 23 randomized controlled trials that investigated the ergogenic effects of NSAIDs. Conclusively, they did not find a significant difference in the maximum performance between NSAIDs and the control groups, nor in the time until exhaustion, or in self-perceived pain. So, it might just be a placebo effect. Should the athletes really take the risks of taking these drugs if they often don't need them and doesn't scientifically increase their performance? And even if they did, should these drugs be banned from sports? For a drug to be on the doping list, there are three main criteria. 1. Enhance sport performance. 2. Represent a health risk. Or 3. Violate the spirit of sport. Does NSAIDs violate any of these criteria? Pick one and choose. I know what I think. In my opinion, NSAIDs should at least be a prescription medicine. Today, they are still an over-the-counter drug that can be found in the local supermarket for under 5 bucks. Like Red Bulls. No wonder the athletes are self-administering the intake and end up eating them like Smarties. To sum up, what is the proper NSAID approach? For the general healthy population, there is a scientific evidence to support the safety of NSAIDs for most people when taking them for no longer than 10 consecutive days below the recommended dosage. For example, for ibuprofen, the recommended maximum daily dose is 1200 mg, with a recommendation that the smallest effective dose to be used. But what about prolonged use on combination with vigorous exercise? Much more research is needed on this issue. The FDA only mentions that cardiovascular risk with NSAIDs is dose and duration dependent, and this risk also increases in the healthy population. In this presentation, I haven't even discussed the possible negative effects of NSAIDs on the musculoskeletal tissue, healing, and protein synthesis. I can briefly state that there is evidence of negative effects if used longer than three consecutive days. All in all, there is definitely research to give us a high assumption of misuse and malpractice happening in low and high level sports. In many cases, NSAIDs are used without true medical indication or even used in healthy and uninjured athletes to promote performance. Before any new measures are taken in the medicinal industry against the use of NSAIDs in exercise, it will be important for the medical staff, trainers and coaches to update themselves and the athletes on the side effects of NSAIDs. And in regards to the sudden cardiac death in sports, a screening program of the athlete's cardiovascular profile with a 12-lead electrocardiogram is a strategy that needs promotion.